Hey friend, welcome to another episode of Making Dough Show, uh, where we are obsessed with helping you grow your sales and not only that, run a profitable restaurant that does not run you. In today's episode, we're going to talk about your break-even point in your restaurant. So <clears throat> this is a question I get quite often about the break-even point, and part of the reason is because one of the things that we've done in our restaurant is that when we purchased our restaurant, the first one, the first restaurant, we did not know how to read a PNL. We, um, it was cooked and we did not know how to assess based on the gross sales of this restaurant, which I'm going to share with you in details of how much it was, uh, the information that we did have, you know, so when, especially when you go purchase a restaurant, a failing restaurant, there are facts, you know, there is much you do not know. It doesn't matter what the owner is telling you that is selling you. In our case, the broker told us that this is a cash cow. And I quote, and it really wasn't. And I'm going to show you the numbers. You're going to know, select few numbers that you know for sure. And based on the numbers that you have, which we're going to call your fixed cost, you can assess and what should your gross sales be to hit your break even point. So I'm going to go over that with you today. There are a lot of ways for you to create your break, um, calculate the break even point for your restaurant. You can do a lot of math. You can work your bookkeeper with your CPA. If the goal that you have is come up with an accurate, um, to the third decimal accuracy, blah, blah, blah. This is not going to be about that. This is going to be about you getting an idea of where should your gross sales be in order for you to hit the break even based on your fixed costs. It is incredibly simple to do this math. I'm going to show you um, the numbers uh, real quick. So here what I have for you, as you can see, is some of the data that we have. You will know your rent right? You will know your rent data uh, for your restaurant as to what uh, the rent is. Whatever the fixed cost is, right? Whatever your rent is. Each industry is different. Now, if you have a restaurant in Beverly Hills, that's going to be different. For us, we own pizzerias. Average recommended rent percentage <clears throat> for us is seven to eight percent for a pizzeria. You need to figure out this data is out there. You simply Google it for a Mexican restaurant or for de depending on what it is. What is the average healthy uh, rent? Uh, where should your rent percentage be in terms of associated with your gross sale and in comparison to your gross sales? So for us is seven to eight percent. I put eight to ten percent. I'm going to show you the math here. Uh, real quick. The reason I'm trying to say is that if you want to get a minimum of an average of 10% profit, hopefully it's 15, hopefully it's 20% profit margin is what you want to have. But minimum 10% profit margin is if that is what you would like, let's reverse engineer. So if you want an average of 10% profit margin, your rent needs to be about eight to 10% of your gross sales, your labor and food cost, it needs to be less than 60%. That is a variable cost. If your restaurant is slow, rent is fixed, you got to still pay the rent. And a lot of the bills and things like that are fixed. Your ovens are on all day long, right? You know, the bills, you got to pay some of them insurance. Those are fixed costs. Labor and food costs are variable costs. So if your restaurant is uh, empty, a lot of the times, sadly, you are hopefully going to send people home and control that labor percentage in, in terms of your gross sales, right? And your food cost, you have control over your usage or whatever thing it is, obviously is going to be much less if you're not using the food. In a healthy recommended industry average is that your labor percentage and your food cost percentage need to be about 60% of your sales. Okay. Then I put this whole bundle package, which is your other, you got repairs. You will have repairs. You got to purchase equipment because things break all the time. You have subscriptions such as uh, subscription services. You know, we have subscription like every three months they come and clean the hood every three months, something about the oil uh, <clears throat> grease trap, blah, 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 the hood, uh, you know, the service, the AC, these are subscriptions that you're going to have. These are fixed costs. You're going to have insurance. You got to got bills. Marketing is also a part of this whole thing. And I put 20%. Now, again, 
This is not a scientific accurate data. This is an estimate. So the estimate is rent. It's about eight to ten percent. Labor is that. Everything else is about twenty percent here and there. You have control over some of the stuff in here. So hopefully your average margin, if you add this numbers over here, right, sixty, eighty. Um, 90 and hopefully you will have a 10% profit uh, at the end. Again, ideally more, but you get my point. We're just going to get an idea of calculating. So we purchased a restaurant, right? Restaurant that we purchased is and was $9,500 a month. So the question we're going to ask ourselves, wait a minute, what should our monthly gross sales be if our rent is 8% of gross sales at $9,500 a month? This is a very basic math. It's 8 over 100, 8% equals 9,500 over X. X is our gross sales. Does that make sense? So your gross sales, this is a very basic math, of your monthly gross sales, if, if $9,500 is 8%, what is that 100 is going to be $118,000 a month. This needs to be the gross sales in order for the rent to be 8% of the sales. So in yearly, if you just simply your monthly gross, which is 118K times 12, it's about $1.4 million for our location number one in order for our average basic math that we've done in order for that restaurant at a $9,500 a month rent in order for us to collect a minimum of average 10% profit, our yearly gross sales need to be $1.4 million. So when we bought our restaurant, based on the PL and the broker saying that who's a professional, this is what they do for a living, brokers who had no concept of this basic, basic math. The sales for that restaurant was about $40,000 a month, as you can see. Um, we needed about $120,000 a month, which is, again, we had to over triple it. And also yearly, it was making about $500,000, something like that, based on the tax returns, because that's another data point you have. You can't, things you can trust is what we paid the government, supposedly, right? That's hopefully is, you get my point. I'm not going to go into detail on that. That should have been 1.4 million. And it was about $500,000. So this was not a cash cow. And it's about a million dollars, give or take, below break even point. That's what it was, the restaurant we bought, our first restaurant. So the second restaurant, I'm going to show you another, uh, similarly, our second restaurant, when we approached it, we're like, okay, what is the rent for that restaurant? The rent was $1,750. It is a much smaller square footage uh, of a restaurant. It's only pickup and delivery. And then it dawned on me, oh, wait a minute. This is why Little Caesars and Domino's, they're able to sell their food so cheap. Um, part of it is because the rent is much less. If, if you have a dine, you know, you get my point. So a square footage is much smaller. You're going to pay much less rent. So in this case, again, what should our monthly gross sales be if our rent is 8% of our gross sales at $1,750 a month? So if I did the math again, 8 over 100, $1,750 over X, X is my gross sales. What should my gross sales be on a monthly basis? It's $21,000, right? It's very simple math. $21,000 a month is going to make my rent to be 8%. So beyond that, again, that increases my profit margin. Obviously, you do need to consider your labor and your food costs simply grows with your, you know, if you're making 3 million, you know that about 60% is going to be still probably give or take your labor and your food, but you get my point. <clears throat> with that, we realize, wait a minute, our gross yearly sales need to be 262,000. And why does this matter? Is because I'm going to have to look at these numbers. For example, in the case that I'm like, okay, we're currently making 40,000. Um, in, in this restaurant that we bought number one, and it needs to be 120 K. So it means that every month we need to bring hundred thousand more in sales, hundred thousand in sales is going to be how much batch of dough, how many staff members do I need? And then also if I know my average ticket is for easy math, um, is uh, $20, right? I, this will give me an idea of, wait a minute, a hundred thousand dollars a month. I'm doing the math here, hundred thousand dollars a month, every single month divided by 20, that's like 5,000 tickets more per month. So if I were to say it's probably, um, let me see, it's then I divided by four. So that's about 12. I mean, either it's 
5,000 families that come and visit us once a month, or it's 2,500 uh, 2, new families that visit us twice a month. So I, when, I think, when I think about marketing, this gives me an idea of how many families we need to convert. Again, this is estimate numbers. This is not like, again, accurate. I'm just thinking about, I need to get 2,500 families that are loyal to Pizza Gut or Papa John's or whoever else it is to convert them to become our customers and get them to come over twice a month right? With my average ticket, $20. Again, I'm just doing my estimate numbers to what is possible, what's doable. Again, prep, number of batches of dough, amount of cheese that we're shredding, amount of food order, the number of staff you're going to need when you do the, that. that's going to kind of reverse engineer. This is a very simple math. Again, I'm, I know you can find extensive formulas online. You look for how to calculate the break-even point and da-da-da. You can pay your CPA heftily. Or this is just to give you an idea of what your gross sales, whether for the year or month needs to be in order to the standard of your numbers to make sense, to know that where you're going to be green and in profitable zone, which is our goal. If the restaurant isn't profitable, we are simply operating and uh, you know this is a very expensive hobby right so the goal you need to be incredibly aggressive if you are below break even to be marketing your restaurant aggressively where are those 2500 or 5000 families that you need to be marketing to in different ways how are you going to repeat you know maybe you have a client database whether it's phone that's why we're obsessed with text message marketing to bring people back again and again and again you see the power of getting repeat business if you get 1200 people to come every single week or 2500 people to come twice a, a month or 5000 families to come once a month so that gives you an idea of how many people you need to um make the sales that you need to go way past your break even point let me know your thoughts on this uh, especially if you when you bought your if you bought a failing restaurant did you do this math did the you get an idea of what your gross sales need to be for this whole thing to make sense. I would love to hear it. Uh, as always, leave us a comment if you're on YouTube, on Instagram, on LinkedIn Zone, uh, or on the podcast. I'd be happy if you, know, if you leave us a review. I would appreciate it greatly. As always, we're one email away. You can email me at team at makinggoshow.com and love to hear it. If you have any questions, you have any thoughts about this particular topic or anything else you'd like us to cover on the show, let me know and I'd be delighted to connect with you and uh, help you out and with that let's get back to work and make some dough thank you so much mm, bye bye